All right, guys, so this is our flank steak with chimichurri. Everybody loves a great grilled steak, and nothing is better than the kudu for getting that perfect grill mark and perfect grill flavor. So to start, we have our charcoal underneath our grill surface. And what we're using are two of our charcoal lighter stacks. And so that means really concentrated high heat. This is something where we wanna do this over heat that's high enough that if we hold our hand towards the surface, whew, maybe about three or four seconds, that's all that we can stand. But that's what we need to get those really dark grill marks. So let me walk you through a really basic marinade that works great for any kind of steak, but today specifically, we're using flank steak. Years ago, when I first learned how to cook, one of the basic marinades that we used for beef was what I'm gonna show you today. And so it starts with red wine, which is what I have in my container right here. We're gonna pour this straight into our bag. We're also gonna add three different vegetables that we call in traditional cooking mirepoix. What that means is carrots, onions, and celery. So just sliced up, throw them right into your bag here. And again, our ratios for this, for the most part, is about two parts onion to one part carrot, one part celery. And you guys see that in the recipe. So all of this goes into our bag. A little bit of sliced garlic here as well. And I like the slices because if we chop up our garlic super fine, it tends to burn in a marinade. And so it's better if we leave it in big pieces. I'm also gonna add some ground black pepper. And this is sort of our secret ingredient here, dried mushrooms. These are dried porcini mushrooms. You could use dried shiitakes, dried chanterelles. What you're getting from the dried mushrooms is an incredibly savory flavor. And so if you can't find this, don't worry about it. You can still make the recipe without them, but it does add a really cool kick. So let's throw that in there, seal the top on our bag here, and then Kind of use your hands to work everything through. So you have your onions, your carrots, your celery, your seasonings, and just work it into the meat. Make sure that every kind of inch of this is covered. And then what I like to do is kind of just pop the corner of the bag open and squeeze out this extra air. Zip it closed, and then that way we can store it with all of these vegetables sort of setting right against the meat surface. So we'll take that and just put it aside in our refrigerator for three, four hours. If you wanna do it overnight, that's perfectly fine. It'll just add a depth of flavor, but try to leave it at least for a couple of hours before you use it. And so that's what I have in this bag right here. This is actually sat overnight. So we'll take this out using our tongs and I'll show you guys what it looks like when we pull it out here. So once it's sat, it kind of takes on almost like a reddish purplish color, which is kind of cool. So we'll pull that out here, transfer it to our plate, and we'll set this out of the way. So our piece of meat, as I said, it has kind of a, a nice reddish color, but what's interesting is that you can start to see the grain in the flank steak, which is, that's the important part. That means the marinade is actually starting to do what we want it to do, which is that it's breaking down and tenderizing this. Now, you'll notice that I haven't put any salt in the marinade, and that was on purpose. I prefer for this particular marinade to leave the salt out. I think that when we put the salt in it, it draws a little bit too much of a funky flavor inside the meat. So we do still need salt, so that means that we're gonna salt it, kosher salt, pretty heavy, aggressive pinch. Remember, when we're grilling meat, salt is our friend here, and some of it is inevitably gonna fall into the fire, so we have to over-season a little bit. So, salt, and then a touch of oil as well, just to make sure that it doesn't stick on the grates, but not too much. So, drizzle of oil, and then we're gonna take this to our fire. So, again, hot coals, medium high. That's about all the time you wanna leave your hand there. And we'll take our steak, and we're gonna lay it away from ourselves directly over the hot part. And if you have a little bit of this extra sort of marinade stuff, just you can pull it off with your hands if you want to. You can use your tongs to kind of scrape it off. But we're gonna leave this on the fire for, I don't know, probably five or six minutes. It's really hard to give an exact time when you're grilling anything. That's one of the first things that everybody has to learn when you're cooking over real, true wood or charcoal or live fire is that it's always a little bit different. And so as you begin to do this and you become more familiar with it, you'll kind of learn instinctively when something is done. But I'll show you a couple tricks here in a minute. So for now, let's just leave it and not do anything and we'll come back and check on it in about five minutes. All right, so it's been about five minutes here, and I could see this browning around the edge. That means that it's time for us to flip this thing over, so. 
Now, the cool thing about this, granted, we're not gonna have super strong grill marks, but the reason for that is that we've used a really liquidy marinade. It's full of wine and that's gonna kind of sweat out as we cook. But the great thing is that the caramelization that we're gonna get from that wine on the surface is gonna more than make up for it in flavor. All right, so one of my favorite sauces to make with any kind of grilled meat, but specifically grilled beef, is chimichurri. I learned how to make this when I was cooking in Argentina, and it's still one of my favorite condiments. And the cool thing is that it's very, very easy to make. So in front of me here are the ingredients that we're gonna use to make our chimichurri. And it starts with a whole bunch of raw garlic, which is what I have right here. So let's spoon our garlic into the bowl. We're gonna add a little bit of minced up red onion. We're gonna add some chopped up red sweet peppers. We're gonna add some red wine vinegar to this and that acidity is key to making an awesome chimichurri. So let's mix all this stuff up. Just give it a stir together here. And into this mixture, we're gonna add some dried spices. So in this bowl, I have some kosher salt. I have some red chili peppers. I have a little bit of something called espalette pepper, which is kind of halfway in between cayenne pepper and smoked paprika. So pour those in. Some dried oregano. And a little bit of olive oil. So all of this together here, and again, mix it up. Now, I know this looks like it has a lot of ingredients, but the cool thing about it is that this part right here, all of the dried spices, the onions, the garlic, the peppers, you can make this and put it in a jar and leave it in your refrigerator for weeks. Honestly, the longer it sits, the better it tastes. And then when you're ready to serve it, you take some of this mixture and add some fresh herbs to it, which is what I have right here. Both chopped parsley and a little bit of fresh oregano. So we have dry and fresh. So give all of this a stir up together and it's gonna look kind of chunky and coarse that's what we're looking for this is again this is a condiment we want this to complement the flavor of our steak this isn't going to steal away from it so now that we have our chimichurri mixed up we can tell that our steak is done and let me show you how we're just giving it a light press and we see it spring back to us that's kind of a, a little trick that you have to learn over time but that tells me that this thing is done and one of the things i love best about the kudu is that for us to rest this steak. We don't have to actually take it off of its grill surface. We can literally just use our tongs to push it out of the way. It's that easy. We're not turning this knob. We're not moving anything up and down. We're just pushing it out of the way and we're letting this meat rest off of the heat, but still somewhere warm for about seven or eight minutes before we slice it up. And that's gonna keep all of the juices inside the steak. So when we come back, we'll carve it up a little bit. We'll show you what this chimichurri looks like on it and show you a finished flank steak with chimichurri in under 20 minutes. All right guys, so we've allowed this to rest. We'll just move this back over to ourselves. Again, super easy to do. Take this off the grill here. And what I love about letting it rest on the grill grates is that those juices that do come off, they drip down into the fire. They don't actually collect on the outside of it so it doesn't end up steaming and ruining your caramelization. So take it over to our cutting board and let me show you what we're talking about here. So. Here's the key with flank steak. You can see this grain that runs here. And what I mean by grain is these kind of these lines that you see in the meat. Well, one of the keys to making something super tender is to cut across the grain. So rather than cutting it following them, we're gonna slice directly across it here. And I'll show you what I mean. So nice, you know, medium thin slices, not paper thin by any stretch of the imagination, but not super big either. And what that ends up looking like when you fan this thing out, you get to see nice, juicy, pink grilled meat here. One more slice. And what we're gonna get is something that's super tender and incredibly flavorful. What I like to do, honestly, just serve this with the chimichurri spoon right over the top of it, just a, a little bit here. Don't go crazy with it, but that nice kind of bright, fresh herbal note on top of the caramelized grilled meat that get all of the flavor from dripping down into these coals, that little sort of nice waft of smokiness. I mean, it's not gonna get any better than this. And as you can see, it was super simple to put together. So throw out the gas grill. The kudu is always gonna win when you're talking about a backyard grilled steak.